Because man is temporary, man is needy, man breathes, man eats, man is born and man dies. But God is eternal. God does not need to eat, God does not need to drink, God does not breathe, because God is self-sufficient. God does not have a beginning, and God does not have an end. So to say something is eternal and temporary, both at the same time, that something is infinite and finite, both at the same time, that something is immortal and mortal, that is self-sufficient and needy, it's an impossibility. You are asking or the person is claiming that two completely opposite contradictory things exist at the same time. And if you claim that, then on what basis can you ask people to even believe in God in the first place? If you claim that, then what is your argument and what basis can you say to people, believe in God? Because if you say believe in God because it's rational, then you demand that they believe in something irrational, then they will then question the very belief in God in the first place. So it's not something that can ever be proven. It is only something that can be claimed. And so therefore the first beauty and the first wonderful thing about Islam is exactly this. What Islam teaches about God. It is a belief that is so pure. It is so free from irrational beliefs. It is so completely in accordance with reason and with the natural disposition and the natural inclination of the human being. We are not taught, rather the Qur'an refutes any concept that God is a trinity, that God is three and God is one. No, the Qur'an clearly says, do not say three, do not say trinity. Your God is one God. Do not say trinity. Desist. That will be better for you. Your God is one God. The Qur'an says about those people who believe that, for example, that Jesus is God. Then the Qur'an gives a beautiful, rational argument to appeal to the common sense and to the nature of the human being. It says, if God wanted to destroy Jesus and Mary and everything in the heavens and the earth, who could stop him? Meaning Jesus and Mary and everything, in fact, in the heavens and the earth, is under the power and the control of God. And that which is under the power and the control of God cannot be God. They ate food, the Qur'an says. They walked on the streets, the Qur'an says. See how we make our signs clear to them and see how they are turned away from the truth. The Qur'an calls people away from worshipping the things of this world. Don't worship the sun. Don't worship the moon. Don't worship the stars. Worship the one who created the sun and the moon and the stars. All of these things have no power and no strength of their own. Rather, all of their power and their ability comes from God. So worship the one to whom all power and strength and ability lies. Why do you bow down and worship idols that you yourself fashion with your hands? And then you call upon them and you seek their help. But these things could not even help themselves. If they fell down, they couldn't pick themselves up. If you smashed it, they could not even prevent you. So how can you worship this thing that has no power, no ability? It cannot hear you. It cannot benefit you. It cannot harm you. It has no ability whatsoever. Why do you worship these things? Why do we worship each other? Other human beings, that we allow other human beings to forbid things for us, which God, who is all wise and all knowing, has allowed. And to allow for us things, which God, who is all wise and all knowing, has forbidden. Where it is Allah, God, the Creator, He is the one who knows all things. And what the human beings know is very, very little. So the Quran is appealing with beautiful, wonderful, reasonable arguments, calling to something also, not only the mind, but something that is deep within the, the human being. A deep knowledge, a deep recognition, a deep recognition of this truth. That it is God alone, the Creator alone, 
that is worthy of being worshipped. That He is the Lord, the provider, the sustainer. And this, my dear listeners, is the first of the great wonders and the beauty of Islam. What Islam teaches about God. Is there anything irrational, fanatical, unreasonable about that? Is there anything unreasonable in anything of that? Is there anything irrational in anything of that? No. Rather, the honest and sincere person must admit that this is a very rational and very reasonable belief. And this belief, in fact, is the foundation of the teachings of Islam. In fact, Islam is all about the human being's relationship with God. What we should believe about God. What we should say about God and what we should not say about God. What we should attribute to Him and what we should not attribute to Him. How should we worship Him? How should we seek His pleasure? And how should we avoid His wrath? And then the Qur'an tells us also that this life is not the only life. That there is another life to come. There is a time when every human being will be recreated by God physically as well as spiritually but physically and that human beings from the first to the last will be assembled in front of God and He will judge them. He will judge them according to what they believed and according to what they did. That every atom's weight of good that we have done, we will know about it and every atom's weight of evil that we have done, we will know about it. You know, it is one of the deepest and most natural things within the human being is the desire for justice. One of the deepest and most natural things within the human being is the desire for justice. To the extent that, to the extent that, if a small child, a small child has something taken away from it, it will cry. It will cry. If a small child has some injustice done to it, it will complain. Even though this child has not reached the age or the ability to reason. But something deep within the natural instinct of the human being craves for justice. But we look at this world in which we live. And we see, very often, it seems as if justice is not done. That the powerful and the rich get away with many evil criminal acts. And the poor and the weak and the defenseless seem to suffer. That there are people who steal and murder and commit the most atrocious tr crimes, yet they seem to be living a life of luxury. Yet someone lives an honest life, yet they, at the end of it, seem to get nothing. But if we look to this universe and we go back as we began, we will see that in reality, we have a world that is so finely balanced. A universe that is clearly working according to such precise laws. Therefore, it is something deeply acceptable to the human mind and to the human nature that justice will be done. That those people who committed crimes will not escape. And those people who led good and righteous lives will be rewarded. Therefore the belief in the day of judgment, the day of accounting, when the guilty criminals will be punished and the righteous will be rewarded. It is something.